2015 has been a pretty okay year for gaming. While there certainly were some great surprises with games like Nier Automata, Horizon Zero Dawn, Wolfenstein 2, Divinity Original Sin 2, Cuphead, and Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, and there are many more, but there have also been some pretty disastrous and disappointing titles like Star Wars Battlefront 2, Destiny 2, Mass Effect Andromeda, Middle Earth Shadow of War, Need for Speed Payback, and NBA 2K18, and so on and so forth. 2017 has proven to be a year of ups and downs with gaming, I think that's the best way to describe it. There's never been so much controversy and attention to how certain games handle their microtransactions. This year has proven to be one of the first times that consumers really stood up against a giant publisher like Electronic Arts and said we are tired of your cash grab attitude. This has also led to conversations being started by some government officials that wish to see consumers protected by certain publishers' predatory practices. The biggest ongoing fight against microtransactions is Hawaii politician and gamer Chris Lee, who's gotten six U.S. states to start looking into law that would ban anyone under 21 from purchasing a game featuring microtransactions. Now, the most controversial game of 2017 is clearly EA Star Wars Battlefront 2. This game still faces many issues as Electronic Arts tries to figure out how to change its progression system as it was originally revolved around microtransactions and credits. This is a feature that ran deep into the roots of Star Wars Battlefront 2's multiplayer, and EA being forced to remove it has proven to be pretty difficult. Additionally, because of EA's last minute backtracking, this has created another problem with players cheating, many of which are using the old fashioned rubber band trick, which keeps your character moving in-game and doesn't get them kicked for being AFK. This allows players to not actually play the game and still milk credits because of the way the system is set up, as no matter how you play, you will always earn credits regardless of performance. Star Wars Battlefront 2 overall is a mess. That's reflected in many of the game reviews, and a month later it still really is. What I found interesting though was an article published by USA Today titled, These Were the Best Video Games of 2017, and oddly enough, Star Wars Battlefront 2 is listed. The so this author, Mark, lists the best game of 2017 for kids, teens, and adults, and as some people have noted, it seems kind of like a paid advertisement. I have no problem with someone enjoying a game, but for something as controversial and messy as Star Wars Battlefront 2 is, I'd like to hear why this author or writer thinks it's among this year's best games. This is an article that will be read by thousands of people, coming from a pretty sizable and reputable publication, and honestly speaking, it's pretty misleading, this article. And I'm not quite sure Mark played most of these games. But to his list with kids, he recommends Super Mario Odyssey, Pro Evolution Soccer 2018, Breath of the Wild, and Mario Plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle, with a small note also recommending Cuphead, Splatoon 2, NHL 18, and Ukulele. For adults, he recommends Call of Duty World War II, Assassin's Creed Origins, Wolfenstein 2, and a note for The Evil Within 2, Middle Earth, Shadow of War, Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice, South Park, The Fractured But Whole, Still love that name. Resident Evil 7, Biohazard, and Persona 5. So far, most of this list is fine, but when he lists off teen games, he has Horizon Zero Dawn, Forza 7, Star Wars Battlefront 2, and Destiny 2, with a note adding PUBG, Uncharted The Lost Legacy, Injustice 2, and NBA 2K18, and I'm already scratching my head right now. Within this best of 2017 list, it seems like an advertisement, as it features some of the most controversial games of this year. His description for Destiny 2 is, whether you played the original action game or not, Bungie's Destiny 2 is a blockbuster sequel that drops players into a futuristic universe with many worlds to explore and battles to be fought. Along with a deep story campaign, this side sci-fi adventure features cooperative and competitive multiplayer modes, and for the first time in a game, an integrated voice companion via Amazon Alexa devices with the free Destiny 2 Ghost skill. If you've been listening into any news as of the last month or two, Destiny 2 is just a controversial mess right now, and actually later today I'll have a video discussing the ongoing mess that is Destiny 2, but this is not among the best of 2017, and putting it next to Horizon Zero Dawn, in my opinion, is just insulting. But to Star Wars Battle Front 2, he says, Star Wars geeks rejoice. Despite some balancing issues at launch, Electronic Arts Star Wars Battlefront 2 is a great ride, especially for Star Wars fans. Experience the untold story of Aiden Versio, an Imperial Elite Special Forces soldier in a solo campaign, or partake in a nail-biting multiplayer battles and tournaments, whether you choose to play as a ground trooper, TIE fighter pilot, or as iconic heroes and villains from Star Wars lore. What is this, amateur hour? Well, if you've played the game, 
the campaign is about five hours long and it's not very good. The multiplayer is still a mess and this article just comes off as a big advertisement for AAA gaming. This article is clearly supposed to inform people and maybe certain games you could look into, but a lot of these games, Shadow of War, Destiny 2, NBA 2K18, and Battlefront 2, should not even be put beside games like Horizon Zero Dawn and Super Mario Odyssey. I really think some of these journalists should disclose some of the problems that these games face, because saying Battlefront 2 is one of the best of 2017 based on this description is just BULLSHIT! This writer is more than likely speaking to your average consumer, and that is the problem that we are dealing with. See, the deal is, the average Joe just doesn't know that they are getting screwed out of money because they think this is normal, all the microtransactions and all that shit. Writers for mass media companies like this guy don't care or fail to inform people of the very issues that we're fighting against. The people that he is writing towards should know that Destiny 2 featured an XP throttling system and tried locking away content unless you opened up your wallet again. And Star Wars Battlefront 2, how about telling people about the controversial progression system that is still a mess because it's predatory micro transactions are offline temporarily because of mass outrage. I don't know what the purpose of this article was, but it's misleading and just contributes to publishers taking advantage of players. And the sad truth is that while we may see this as a problem, Aunt Maggie just went to Walmart to purchase the game for little Jimmy because she thinks it's the best thing ever based on this mini review. Actually, I don't even know if you can call it a review. These type of articles and the Wall Street goof who tried defending Star Wars Battlefront 2 saying we're getting undercharged are the reason why publishers are getting away with anti consumer features, and that needs to change because Aunt Maggie should know what separates a game like Horizon Zero Dawn from Star Wars Battlefront 2. Anyway guys, what do you make of USA Today saying Battlefront 2 is among 2017's best games? We've even saying that hurts, but uh, let me know in the comment section below. But thank you for watching. Make sure to like the video if you did enjoy or found any informative value, and consider subscribing for more videos like this, and I'll see you later.